Liz Klopfer, you know, Ted Bundy's longtime squeeze and ex-fiancé? Well, she kinda disappeared from the scene about 40 years back. But before she pulled a Houdini, she spilled the beans in a book called The Phantom Prince, My Life with Ted Bundy. This book dives into their rollercoaster six-year romance with the infamous serial killer. Bundy, the guy who played both sides a loving partner, and a downright monster ended up admitting to offing 36 women across different states, but word on the street is, the real count might be more like a hundred, give or take. Liz, going by the alias Elizabeth Kendall, dropped this 183-page bomb in 1981. It's like a deep dive into the night they first met in a Seattle bar in 69 and the crazy on-again off-again vibe they had going. The book wraps up with Bundy making some tearful calls from jail before he bit the dust. And get this, it's not your typical murder story it's all about love and vulnerability. She put it out there when she was 36 and Bundy was counting down his last days on death row. So, Liz spills the beans in her book, painting herself as this shy, insecure single mom dealing with a messy divorce and booze battles. She decides to make a change, swapping Ogden, Utah, for Seattle, all in the hope of turning her sad life around. Her biggest wish? Finding love, tying the knot, and snagging a dad for her kiddo, Tina. She lands a gig as a secretary at the University of Washington Medical School, but one night, a buddy pushes her to hit a local bar for a few drinks, not really her scene, considering she's barely scraping by. Now, here's the kicker. Trying to dodge a weirdo at the bar, Liz spots Ted Bundy sitting solo. She makes a bold move, telling him he looks like his best friend just kicked the bucket. Smooth, right? Surprisingly, they hit it off. The chat flows, sparks fly, and even though their first night together is strictly non-romantic, they end up becoming an item soon after. According to Liz's book, she hands over her life to Bundy, basically saying, here, take care of me, and he does, in his way. But here's the twist, she starts relying on him more and more. When Ted's love is flowing, she's on cloud nine. But when it's radio silence from Ted, she feels like absolute nothing. That's the roller coaster of their relationship, where deep connections clash with this growing dependence on Bundy. Klopfer was drawn to Bundy because she was lonely, and he cared for her. So, in her book, Liz spills the details, painting herself as this shy insecure single mom dealing with a messy divorce and a bit too much booze. So, Liz spills the beans in her book about Ted's emotional roller coaster. She says his feelings for her were like a storm strong but all over the place. One minute things are cool and the next, bam, a door slams shut and she's left out in the cold. She'd rack her brain for hours, trying to figure out what went wrong. And then, out of the blue, Ted would be all warm and loving again, and she'd feel needed and cared for. One wild story from the book goes down in February 1970. Liz tells Ted she wants to call him my husband instead of just my boyfriend. So, they decide to make it official, head to the courthouse, borrow a fiver from a friend, and snag a marriage license. But a few days later, right before Liz's parents are about to visit, she asks Ted to clear out his stuff from the apartment. She's worried her folks won't dig the whole living together scene. Well, that didn't sit well with Ted. He gets all worked up, telling her if she's so worried about what her parents think, then maybe they're not ready to tie the knot. He tears up the marriage license and walks away, leaving Liz in the dust. Talk about a rocky road to marriage. So, in 1974, things took a weird turn. News buzzed about two women getting murdered and assaulted, and the name Ted kept popping up along with a description matching Bundy's Volkswagen. Liz got suspicious, but believing Bundy could be a killer? That was a tough pill to swallow. When Liz confronted Bundy about his odd behaviors finding a meat cleaver on his desk, a surgical glove in his coat, or him randomly driving to Colorado to distress he pulled out his charm and smarts to talk his way out of it. Eventually, Liz faced a tough call. She loved the guy but couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. So, she did the unthinkable and went to the cops. But get this they didn't buy that Bundy was the killer. Liz stuck by him, never letting on that she'd spilled the beans to the authorities. It was a real gut-wrenching moment for her, caught between her suspicions and loyalty to the guy she loved. Alright, so their love story hit a snag when Ted jetted off to Olympia and then Utah for work. Less FaceTime, more other people in the picture, but they somehow kept the connection alive. Ted's lovey-dovey letters and calls, even from prison, always had Liz hooked. She spilled in her book, Ted's letters made me feel loved. Then things got real dark. 
News rolls in about missing women in Ted's new stomping grounds. Liz, smelling trouble, decides to go to the cops again in 75. This time, her info puts the cuffs on Bundy for the murders. Here's a jaw dropper from the book, Ted rings Liz up from his Florida prison at 2 a.m. and comes clean. Says he tried to keep his distance when he felt the dark side taking over, but he couldn't resist reaching out to her. And get this he even tried to off Liz once. Confessed to sealing up the apartment, smoke and all, trying to do her in. Liz vividly remembers that crazy night, coughing up a storm and trying to air the place out. The next day, she laid into Ted for not bringing a fan. Talk about a wild ride. Bundy was a nice guy. So, they went their separate ways for good. In 1980, right in the middle of Bundy's murder trial, he tied the knot with Carol and Boone, an ex of his. They had a daughter named Rose in 82, and Bundy claimed he was the dad. Meanwhile, Liz Klopfer was wrestling with some heavy stuff. Imagine finding out the guy you loved was behind some gruesome murders. After they split, she battled alcoholism, kept her distance from people, and leaned on her faith to get through the dark times. She opened up, saying, my spiritual growth is extremely important to me now. I try to live my life according to God's will. I pray for Ted, but I am sickened by him. It's a tough spot to be in when someone warm and loving turns into a killer. And that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Take care.